Hey there, welcome back to this uh, Authank Packs tutorial. Um, we're installing Authank from the point of view of a radiologist to create our own personal PAX server. So you'll remember from the previous episode that this is where we left off last time. We've managed to purchase a virtual private server from DigitalOcean, set up the Authank package on it, and um, actually get the service up and running so that it's accessible at our numerical IP address on port 8042 in the web browser. But we can't get very far because it's just prompting us with uh, the, for a username and password. And I don't have a clue what the username and password is. Uh, and, and actually it's super confusing because I don't think there is one. So it would be impossible to log into here because we don't have any users of the service that we've created. So I'm now going to show you what you need to do to set up some users and gain access to your packs. So I'm back over here in the terminal and I'm just going to type clear to give a bit of a blank screen. Uh, next I'll type ls so that we can see where we are. Um, and I am going to type cd, which is change directory, slash etc slash authank and hit ls again and we'll see that we're in a folder with lots of json files they are the configuration files for the authank server um, so as far as i remember i think it's the authank.json is the one that we want that has like all of the good stuff in it so i'm going to now type a command which is nano and nano is a text editor which is just part of the Ubuntu um, server installation. It's reliably always there. Nano or thank dot JSON to open the text file. And there we go. So here is the configuration file for all thank. So we can go through and see that there are a ton of um, options that we might make use of in some future tutorial videos. Um, but most of all, let's just go through and try and find that section where we can gain access. So I'm going to keep scrolling down until I find something to do with users. Um, oh, here we go. What's this? Registered users. And we can see it's actually commented out. So as we thought, there are no users. So you would never be able to get into it at the moment. And it says authentication enabled false which implies that I wouldn't be allowed to get in there even if there was a user okay so first thing I'm going to do I'm going to just uh, go to the end of the line and I don't really know how to do that with shortcuts but I'm going to change this to true and then I'm going to create as a user so let's just have the password of Authank really insecure and the user Authank again please don't use a rubbish username and password like this uh, on a server which you leave live this is just for demonstration I'm now going to hit Control X which is the exit shortcut and hit yes y to save the buffer and then enter now you'd think that might just do it but actually remember authink is a background service which we've got running so we need to restart the server to recognize the changes we've made so if i just use my up key i cycle back through my old commands and you'll remember this one sudo service authink start and that there was a restart to restart the server. So let's just try that. Again, a very ungratifying response, but let's see if it's worked. So I'm back over in my web browser. I've come to the same page, my um, IP address port 8042, and I've got my username and password prompt. So let's try it. Or thank, or thank. Fingers crossed. Huh, didn't work. So that didn't work, which is a bit disappointing. So I'm back to the terminal and I'm going to use the nano editor to look at Authank JSON and see what I did wrong. 
I like to keep some of these glitches because this is inevitably the suffering which you will go through as you try to get this thing to work. Even though I've done this a few times before, I still glitch out. Here we go, this is it. Remote access allowed. Whether remote hosts can connect or not. I think it's that one. So let's say remote access allowed, true. And authentication enabled, true. Okay, let's try that. Control X, yes, save and exit. And remember, we do need to do another server restart. Let's give it a go. So I'm back here again. Let's try it. All think, all think, enter. Hurrah, we've made it. Look at that. That is our live personal all thank packs. Um, so what can we do? We can have a look at all patients and of course we've got none. We can see what plugins are installed. Now plugins are going to be those um, packages which you saw me installing when I did that um, long command where I pasted all the packages in. So you'll recognize some of those there. And we can click look up and we get a search dialog. Yeah, useful things like when they hit the packs, patient ID, name, accession number. So I guess the next thing we need to do is try and get some images on here. And you'll notice on this screen, which is the all study screen, there is um, that there are a number of options in the top right corner. So we've got upload, query and retrieve, and jobs. So upload is just what it sounds like, the ability to um, drag and drop some DICOM images here and send them up to the server. So that sounds really cool and straightforward. Let's give that a go. So I've just opened a folder with some anonymized DICOM images here. Um, which we're going to try and upload. So I'm going to just highlight all of these different subfolders, which are different uh, series, and click and drag them across. And you'll see that little plus icon. And that looks promising. So let's click Start Upload. Oh no, failure, instant failure. Not great. Oh, I wonder why that's happened. Maybe we should try something a bit simpler, like... I'm just going to hit clear pending uploads. Refresh my page and I can go again. So maybe we just need to try something a bit simpler like a single image. So I'm going to go into one of these folders and we'll see the individual DICOM files. So I'll just go with this one, the single image. And try to start upload again. Oh! Green, done, it's worked. Okay, so maybe it doesn't support the dragging of whole folders um, across. Let's just try to see if we can have actually have multiple images. Uh, we've already got that one. So I'm in the folder and I'm dragging multiple images. Start the upload. Yes, that does seem to work. It's a shame it doesn't allow you to just drag a folder on. That would be much easier, wouldn't it? So I'll do the same for another series just to see what this thing can handle in terms of like a multi-series uh, MR study. Here we go. Couple more. Stir coronal. I can't actually remember what this study is, but it just, um, I was assured that it was something anonymous. So we'll see. All right, so this should be a whole MR study of some sort. It'll be MSK, because that's what I do, and I can kind of tell that from the series names as well. Okay, so um, let's go back to look up. And hopefully in all studies, we've now got some images. There we go. That's a kind of a weird name, but I guess that's some anonymization name. 
MRI hit both. Let's have a look. We click through. And yeah, there are the series that we've uploaded. So what can we do? We've got send to DICOM web server, but have we got a viewer? Um, so how do we view? Okay, I see you have to go into a series before it lets you view. And now that's given us an option to Authank Web Viewer. Oh my word, look at that. It's like magic. Look at that. So I'm viewing some MR images of a hip on my own personal pack server that we've just set up. And isn't that like magic? Fantastic. So I guess you have to go into each series to look at them, which is a bit annoying, but maybe we can um, fix that in the future. So let's see what you can actually do with the viewer. Oh, so I'm right clicking and that's letting me zoom, left clicking and dragging and I'm getting windowing. Yeah, that's good. Nice and sensitive as well. Uh, I'm using the, the mouse wheel here, and that's scrolling. A little icon over here, what does that have? So there's a bunch of options. Oh, that turns on and off the overlays. That's uh, invert. Oh, that did some weird, like, pixelization thing. Maybe it's sharpening or something. And I've got a little drop down here. Ah, that was download. So it's it's downloaded the DICOM file um, here. Yeah. And then we have uh, some zoom options. That's gone really big. Small. And I guess that fills the window. And then windowing. Default. Don't know what that one does. Oh, they're different windows, so long. Bone. So these are more for CT. And then this one, I don't know what that one's trying to do. It wasn't that useful. Quality, low, medium, and high. Let's see the difference between those. So low. Uh, I guess it's a bit more, it looks like it's got some compression artifacts, a bit like a JPEG artifacts in it. Medium. And high. I gotta admit, I'm not seeing a huge difference there. I think that's about it. So we can drag this slider as well. I think, oh, Double clicking and dragging is a zoom. So actually there's some really great commands straight off the mouse that you can use. I mean, right off the bat, this would do fantastically for a little educational server um, where you could supply these direct URLs, I'm assuming, um, and be launched straight into the viewer. So let's open a new tab, put that URL in, and it should take me yeah, straight to there. So you could use this right away as like backbone of um, an education setup, just uploading your images by exporting them from your packs, anonymizing and uploading. Really cool. I did also notice that there seemed to be a feature if I go back to patient. Yeah, look at this, anonymize. So actually, the server will anonymize things for you. Although it's much better practice to anonymize them first before you send them up, of course. Okay, so I think we'll just wrap up this episode um, here, and uh, I'll see you next time.